Cheryl Atkinson, stonewalled, my fight for truth against the forces of obstruction, intimidation, and harassment in Obama's Washington. As President Obama promised an era of transparency and openness, investigative journalist Cheryl Atkinson discovered a different reality. In her book, A Stonewalled, My Fight for Truth Against the Forces of Obstruction, Intimidation, and Harassment in Obama's Washington, she uncovers an administration that obstructs and manipulates the press. This summary reveals how press freedom has suffered during the Obama era, alternative means the government uses to control its narratives, and how journalistic integrity is under threat. It also delves into specific instances where the administration desperately tried to cover up its failures and silence investigative reporting. Obama's Broken Promise President Obama's promise to open up the government has failed as press freedom declines due to unprecedented obstructionism. The White House excludes the press from events of public interest and circumvents tough questions from traditional news media outlets. Reporters Without Borders has downgraded America's press freedom ranking since Obama took office, and the administration prefers to produce its own content using channels that it can control more easily. The Threat to Journalistic Objectivity the Obama administration's actions towards journalists and how it threatens journalistic objectivity and freedom of the press. The Obama administration's time in office saw a worrying trend of journalists who criticized or disclosed sensitive information being shut out from interviews. Investigative reporters also faced legal action and threats when uncovering scandals that could damage the administration's reputation. Leading news organizations such as CBS and C-SPAN have been warned or blocked from access to the president after disobeying government requests. The administration's actions towards journalists have raised concerns about the objectivity and freedom of the press. The Deceptive World of Astroturfing Astroturfing is the practice of deceiving people by creating fake grassroots support for products, groups, or policies to manipulate public opinion. This strategy is used by public relations firms to promote their clients' interests by creating the illusion of genuine public support. Astroturfing is prevalent online, where it is difficult to identify the true identity of someone promoting a product or idea. The practice is so effective that politicians use it to sway public opinion in their favor. While it may seem harmless, astroturfing can have a significant impact on consumer choices, media reporting, and public opinion. Government Surveillance of Investigative Journalists Investigative journalists face challenges in their work as they encounter government surveillance while trying to uncover the truth behind corrupt systems. The government goes to great lengths to identify leaks and sources in an attempt to control leaked information. Leaks and information received by journalists were often obtained by whistleblowers within the government. The author, an investigative journalist, shares her own experience of government surveillance, where spyware infiltrated her computer and made financial accounts and passwords vulnerable. This kind of government surveillance threatens journalistic integrity and freedom. Despite such challenges, investigative journalism is crucial in exposing corruption and maintaining transparency in government systems. ATF's Botched Operation the ATF carried out an operation named, Fast and Furious, where they enabled registered gun dealers to sell firearms to gun traffickers, knowing they would end up in the hands of Mexican drug dealers. Although the Bureau claimed to track the firearms, most of them remained unaccounted for and were used to commit crimes, including the death of Border Patrol agent Brian Terry. The operation resulted in the deaths of many innocent people, and not a single cartel leader was arrested. Despite ATF special agents and cooperating gun dealers expressing their concerns about this operation, it continued for years. This catastrophic operation raises serious questions about the ATF's actions and whether other government agencies were aware of it. Fast and Furious Scandal The U.S. government denied any knowledge of the Fast and Furious gunwalking program until whistleblowers exposed the lies. Reliable documents showed that Attorney General Eric Holder was aware of the operation as early as July 2010, but he testified otherwise. The government has concealed its actions regarding the scandal, 
with President Obama invoking executive privilege for the first time. The scandal was made public by an author whom the government tried to silence. The Green Energy Fiasco The Obama administration's efforts to boost environmentally friendly companies and projects were unsuccessful and resulted in huge financial losses. The administration reserved $90 billion from the 2009 stimulus package to support green energy companies, but their expectations were unrealistic, and the companies that received government money were poorly selected. This led to 12 green energy companies running into financial trouble, five of which eventually filed for bankruptcy, squandering billions of taxpayer dollars. Even companies with bad credit ratings, such as Think Global and Beacon Power, received stimulus tax credits and loans from the government. For instance, Fisker Karma, the plug-in hybrid vehicle that received a $528.7 million loan, which was expected to create 5,000 jobs and produce 75,000 to 100,000 cars each year, filed for bankruptcy after selling only 1,800 cars. The government's attempt to cover up this failure to the public was unsuccessful, and it became another fiasco. The government's response to green energy program scandal. President Obama defended the government's green energy program amidst allegations of financial losses, stating that they had set aside funds to cover any failures. While some media organizations did not cover the failure, those who did received government criticism, leading to refrained reporting. Companies such as Abound Solar collapsed, resulting in the loss of taxpayer money, yet news organizations barely noticed. The government's investments in green energy were protected from negative or critical reports. The problem with news objectivity. In Manufacturing Consent, Noam Chomsky and Edward Herman argue that journalists and editors in news organizations prioritize profitability over objectivity. The author's experience confirms this, with news stories being chosen for their ability to generate revenue instead of their accuracy. Advertisers and powerful people also have undue influence over the news, leading to self-censorship and discouragement of investigative journalism. Access to information is also a hurdle, as the government can be uncooperative or provide biased accounts of events. Journalists have an obligation to report accurately and actively seek out information, rather than relying solely on official sources. Cheryl Atkinson's troubling findings within a stonewalled, unveil an administration that actively works to manipulate the press and hide its own failures. Through examples like Fast and Furious and the Green Energy Program, we see efforts to conceal the truth, distort public perception, and smother journalistic integrity. As the government's stranglehold on media increases, journalists find themselves with their backs against a wall, fighting for the survival of authentic reportage. The battle against obstruction, intimidation, and harassment in Washington, D.C., represents a wake-up call for those who believe in the power of a free press and transparent government.